you guys, it's Stacy with Misguided Road Trips, and today we are headed out for a weekend of fun. Y'all have been asking for him. Here he is. Yay! <laughs> Me and him decided to take a weekend and get away from it all, and we decided we would take the camper, which is back there behind us. I don't know if y'all can see it very good, but it's back there. I hope so. Yeah, me too. It'd be bad if we lost it. But we are going to Andersonville um, National Park, I guess it's called. It's a prison that during the Civil War they kept a lot of the northern... The Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees at. Um, they would keep them there prisoners and it it's a really sad story what went on there. It started off, it was meant just to house them, and then they traded off, you know, here's you four or five um, soldiers back, you give us four or five soldiers back. And then it got to the point where they weren't trading them. Um, I'll get into the rest of the story when I get there, but it says it's extremely haunted with the spirits of soldiers who died there in agony who were very mistreated and also there was a group of yankee soldiers that they called raiders who was basically allowed to torment the other yankee soldiers so they are known to um, make their appearance there some too but enough about that we're heading out we're gonna do a little bit of camping gonna try to make a couple of videos while we're gone so I will get back with y'all when we get there it'll be a while for us but just a few seconds for y'all Throw the cooler on the golf cart, fill it up with beer, and by the time you're done, you're driving right up on that dead gum putting thing and just dropping your ball <laughs> in the hole. I can't even see you, it's so dark. Choo choo track. Choo choo track. Choo choo track. There's bird. Now we gotta find our way to this campground. It's pretty out here. 
Visitor Center Camper Registration Museum information. Right there. Right there? Right there, right there. I don't think there's anyone home. It says closed. Where'd they see the Wilkins well, package? It's closed. I'm going to the campsite. Oh. Oh. Where's the Wilkins packet? At the campsite. Oh, okay. Can I come play on the tanks? I'm going to come shoot the tank. I want to fly the airplane. Oh, uh, my. There's the monument. I'm just thinking of you, baby, because you love TV. I do love TV. I watch YouTube, so I don't need one, but you, dear, you need TV. Oh. I'm not even going to put you on camera right now. I just got a gas bubble. Oh, oh it hurts. <laughs> I'm recording. That was 66. Oh. So is this 68? This is 68. Oh. There's our future home. Let's see, that's supposed to be a pull through. That's a pull through. You can make it have faith in your driving abilities. Oh, but I got a gas bubble. Oh, well, not the <laughs> gas bubble. Oh, I like this. It's all like secluded. <coughs> oh. oh, it's pissing. Look, guys, we can walk through the oh. woods. That was hurting. Are you okay? You want to line us up? Yep. See where you want to put us? Ah. Put us up. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, it's oh, time for right. a new awning. Cliff's trying to fix it. That's the best we're getting. Well, that will work. It's coming loose. <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we bought this awning not long ago. However, we didn't replace the bars and they wanted $500 at Camping World to put the new awning on. Well, Yes, I listen to women. I had faith that my husband could put that awning on right. And we wouldn't have to pay $500. So him and my son-in-law and his boss and all his co-workers came to the house and put this awning on. We bent the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I hope they do better for the United States government than they do this. <laughs> All right, so we're getting it set up. We got the chairs in the little rug, got the camper, put my wind chimes over here. I got my little lanterns over here. Hadn't turned them on yet because it ain't quite dark enough. But this is where we're going to stay for the next two nights. And I'll take y'all inside the camper and show y'all that too. Okay guys, just going to give you a, a quick little tour of the camper so y'all can see inside. But this is the kitchen over here. I have an ice maker because if anybody knows me, they know I love ice. And so I carry one of these with me in the camper so I can make it instead of buying it. And they are really cool. You can get them at Walmart for like $100. But if you are camping or like to do anything where you need a lot of ice, these are the way to go. Because, I mean, this little bitty freezer does not hold much. Not much at all. There's my little stove. My oven. And here... It's the bedroom. I have not made my beds yet. Washed them and just left them in the house. And now they're on the bed waiting to get put back on. So don't look at my mess. But 
out my pretty blankie. This is the bedroom. All because two people fell in love. Ah. Oh. Kind of crazy, I know. Bathroom. So called bathroom and the shower. And then. You have oh, a party. Oh my gosh. Maybe when the sun goes down, then bugs will go away. Yeah, those bugs are bad. But that is the camper. That's where we stay when we go on these camping trips. Russian 120 mm mortar M843. It's kind of scary to think about these things and what they could do, their potential during wartime. This is an anti tank gun M3. Wow, look at that one over there. I'd hate to be looking down the barrel of that thing. A Russian 85mm MM Divisional Gun D44. This was um, captured in Vietnam. Wow. So they actually were using that to shoot at our guys and we ended up getting it. Let's see, this is an American made anti-tank gun M1 it's made in 1942 155 howitzer wow this was made by the Americans 1917 the company that made it American Brake Shoe and Foundry Company received an order from the United States for 3,000 of these. Wow. Check out this big old contraption. This thing is huge. Just think about what it fires out and how big the cannonballs must be on these things. The long tom. Made in Pittsburgh, 1943. Can't even get that thing, it's so big on one screen. Check this out, guys. That is awesome. The Bushmaster. Yep, these were 1950. They loaded that up with Marines and brought them in to where they were fighting. The Patton medium tank, M47. Can you actually see on the picture during World War I Patton helped um, create this tank. He trained the first 500 American soldiers how to use it. And here's the last. Up a lot, there's one more. This is the Sherman tank. World War, World War II. I can't talk today. Now over there, you see all the airplanes, the Air Force, the Navy, big old airplane in the front, and over to the side is the helicopter. 
That's pretty cool. Hope y'all like these kind of videos. They're pretty interesting to me just to see where our guys have been and how far we've came. And y'all know I'm from a military family. You know, I never was until I grew up and married a Marine. And then, unfortunately, that didn't work out. But fortunately for me, it worked out for the better because me and Cliff got together and we've been together for 20 years now. And he's retired military. My oldest daughter was in the United States Navy. And most of my son-in-laws have been in the military, in the Army, and in the Air Force. I'm sorry, not the Air Force. I have a nephew that's in the Air Force. Um, yeah, I had a son-in-law that was in the Marines and a son-in-law in the Army. So, we've all done a lot of military things in our life. But it's nice out here. And in fact, it's a funny story because when me and Cliff first met, it was in September of the first year we had started dating. It was my birthday, and um, which is September 15th. And there was a huge hurricane. I can't remember what the name of the hurricane was, but they evacuated our town. We're not far from the coast, so they evacuated a mandatory evacuation. When we got in our car, we had the kids with, with us and um, all our animals. We were packed up, but we took off to get out of the way of the hurricane. And we live about three hours from here, but it took us 12 hours to get here and traffic was so bad, it was a complete mess. And we ended up sleeping out here, right over there. They opened this whole section up for tents and just people who wanted to sleep. And um, yeah, we ended up getting to stay out here for free back then. I never thought 20 years later I would be here, but here I am. All right, so let's go see what other trouble we can get into. Guys, check this out. This is the museum at the Andersonville prison. There goes Cliff. We're gonna go in there and see. What all they tell us about this place? We just went through a walk through the cemetery and the um, prison, and I'm gonna bring those videos out after this one. So if you're interested in Andersonville and what all took place here, it's a Civil War prison for Northern soldiers that the South took back during the Civil War, and has a lot of history in it and a lot of bad history. Um, a lot of men weren't treated good that were from the North and not an intentional mistreating by the government per se, but they were mistreated because they only had so many rations, water supply and food to bring in for the troops and the prisoners. And the prisoners ended up, there was so many that originally they didn't think they'd need a prison. Then they built 16 and a half acres of prison and that wasn't enough. So they had to add another 10 acres worth of prison. And so when they sent supplies in, they just did not have the means to feed all these people. And of course the soldiers would get the first portions of everything because they wanted to keep them strong and healthy so they could keep fighting. So the prisoners um, didn't get a whole lot that was left over. And so a lot of them were malnourished. They were 
left out in the sun, the prison itself was basically just a wooden wall put up for them to stay in with no roof. So they were subjected to the elements of the earth and down here in Georgia it gets hot in the summer and a lot of them passed away. I think there was like 13,900 that passed away and are buried here at the cemetery. So it's a little much. It was it was hard times, but that's where we're at. We're going to the museum here in a minute. I was walking around here because I thought I might could see through the woods to show y'all where the actual prison was, but I don't think I can tell through there. Okay, this is the front and we're going in and I'm thinking that air conditioner is going to feel so good. Of course, judging by the sky, it's fixing to storm. Let's see. Probably feel good being out in the rain. I guess those soldiers that were prisoners before probably loved it when it got like this. All right. Go in here. You are not allowed to carry firearms. Thank you. 